Hello, thank you for joining Helaman's Army today. And to round out the discussion on the first article of faith uh, for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I thought it would be good to take a moment and discuss uh, the concept commonly known as the Trinity. Um, I approach this subject very uh, cautiously. I, I am not... Um, I was not actually excited to talk about this subject, and I actually considered not talking about this subject. Uh, but I feel that I've done enough research on this that I've got some insights that are generally not known among the Latter-day Saints and are certainly, uh, as I've talked to other uh, people in, uh, in different sects of Christianity, um, whether they're, you know, you know, the evangelicals or whether they're born again or, or uh, uh, Catholic or what have you, um, <clears throat> that there's a lot of folks who don't really seem to understand the origins of this uh, Trinitarian concept. Um, and so I thought I would just throw out a few different points of view, certainly from the Latter-day Saint perspective, and then also give some some documentation that shows that, hey, look, this is the guy that really put this all together and came up with this Trinity concept. Um, the Church of I'm, I'm going to make it very clear that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints does not um, follow the creeds of men, and we do not follow, uh, and we do not adhere to uh, the any of the creeds of of the Trinity. Um, when I look at this image um, off to the side here, of that image there, um, I see nothing but confusion. It is not is not is not is 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 i it's it's uh it's confusing to me um now a lot of other people might look at that and say oh i totally get this and then generally the our experiences as members of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints is that when we start to ask questions about this concept and as we start to press in on this <clears throat> that it generally ends most of the time um with accusations and then saying that we can never understand the uh the incomprehensible uh nature of god and that and that we need to just just accept it um and that's that's one of the that's one of the arguments which i find fascinating considering that um that we are told to be uh perfect as our father in heaven is and how can we know how to do that unless we can know who he is and what he is um, and just saying that he's incomprehensible and oh, just ignore it and let's move on. It doesn't work. Um, at least it doesn't work for me. And usually when I hear that, uh, that's generally a, a way of saying, hey, I'm done talking about this and um, I don't care what you believe. And that's fine. Um, I'm not, if you really want to worship the Trinity and you really want to go that way, I'm not trying to tear down your faith. I don't want to tear down your faith so much as I just want to say this is why we as Latter-day Saints don't follow the Trinity. Um, so I will make it clear that yes, I, 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 I will use some strong language in this, in this video, but my purpose is not to tear down anyone else's faith. That happens to us all the time. To members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we face this regularly when people come at us and try to tear down our faith. Um, and I've made it very clear <clears throat> in other videos that I've done that anyone who's trying to tear down your faith is generally not worth your time. And I'm not really trying, I'm really not trying to tear down your faith, which is exactly why I didn't really want to do this video. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we often are told that we're not Christians because we don't adhere to or we don't follow uh, the tr this Trinitarian concept. And so I just want to make it clear as to why we don't and to why we as members of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints our, our article of faith and i'll go to it right now <clears throat> it says that we believe in god the eternal father and in his son jesus christ and in the holy ghost period end of story that's it yes we do believe in god the eternal father yes we do believe in his son jesus christ and yes we do believe in the holy ghost uh we do not talk about them in a trinitarian way in other words we don't talk about them um, as as they're of the same being or, or of the same substance we uh, i've yet to find any uh, scriptures in the bible that actually explicitly state that god the eternal father his son jesus christ and the holy ghost are the same being 
I have yet to find anything in the in the Bible that says they are of the same that they are the same substance. Um, there are a lot of and it's interesting because I'll say that and someone will come up with a, a quote and say, oh, well, what about this scripture? And John 1, 1 seems to always be the one. And But John 1, 1 does not explicitly state that they are of the same being and they are the same substance. Um, there are a lot of scriptures in the Bible that show their um, their uniqueness and show their unique, their identity separate from each other. Um, and that's that's not a belief that I'm ever going to give up on. Um, if I go get to heaven and I stand before some uh, incomprehensible being, if I am somehow judged by some incomprehensible being at, at the judgment bar, um, then then I'll then I'll say, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I was wrong on that one. Whoops. But I really don't think that's going to happen. I'm pretty positive that's not going to happen. Actually, I know it's not going to happen. I can testify that Jesus is the Christ and he is the son of God, a separate being. So <clears throat> what is it about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that makes us a little different? And one, the very, the very ultimate thing is that we believe in revelation. We believe in continuing revelation. Um, and that is, seems to be a, a, a touchy, touchy subject for a lot of folks. Um, especially you know outside the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints that <clears throat> that we believe that god still does call apostles and prophets in this day in our day and age he has not stopped talking to us there was a period of time where we stopped listening there was a period of time where uh where the world went out and killed the apostles that they they looked for that they they sought them out and and stoned them. i mean we can read about the stoning of stephen uh in in the new testament we read about how all the apostles died that's it's all well documented how they were all they were all died you know um some of them were crucified some of them stoned so they were all killed um and and john was banished to the island of patmos so and, and with that we it's clear that we as as a people humanity stopped listening uh, we also believe at, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints <clears throat> that God called Joseph Smith to be a prophet. Um, and in the Joseph Smith history, in the um, what we affectionately call the first vision, um, there, there's a lot of great videos about the first vision on YouTube. And matter of fact, if you're interested in the first vision, I would recommend you just... Um, just just get on YouTube and search for the first vision. It'll show up and watch one of the videos. There's multiple videos and they're all very well done. Um, basically, he went out to pray um, and asked God about which church he, he should join. Uh, and I'm actually going to start in the Joseph Smith history, uh, verse 18, and I'm going to read through verse 19. <clears throat> My object in going to inquire of the Lord was to know which of all the sects was right, that I might know which to join. No sooner, therefore, did I get possession of myself as to be able to speak than I asked the personages, and in the first vision, it's, it's God the Eternal Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, that appeared to Joseph Smith. He said, Then I asked the personages who stood above me in the light, which of all the sects was right? For at this time in my, it had never entered into my heart that all were wrong, and which I should join. I was answered that I must join none of them, for they were all wrong. And the personage who addressed me said that all their creeds were an abomination in his sight. And those professors were all corrupt, that they draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They teach for the doctrines, the commandments of men, having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Now I know for many uh, who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this is some very strong language because <laughs> if if i was in your shoes i would probably be very offended by that <clears throat> uh, but this is the reason that we don't follow the trinity the creed of the trinity is that the the apostles creed or any of the or the any of the other creeds and um th this is the reason is that the uh that their creeds were an abomination before god so in Doctrine and Covenants, which is revelation given to Joseph Smith, uh, section 123, 
this one specifically, um, this was written by Joseph Smith the prophet while a prisoner in the jail at the Liberty, Missouri, March 20th, 1839. Um, <clears throat> verse 7, and I think verse 8, I'll read that one too. It is an imperative duty that we owe to God, to angels, with whom we shall be brought to stand, and also to ourselves, to our wives and children, who have been made to bow down with grief, sorrow, and care under the most damning hand of murder, tyranny, and oppression, supported and urged on and upheld by the influence of that spirit which has so strongly riveted the creeds of the fathers, who have inherited lies upon the hearts of the children and filled the world with confusion, and has been growing stronger and stronger, and is now the very mainspring of all corruption, and the whole earth groans under the weight of its iniquity. It is an iron yoke. It is a strong band. They are of the very handcuffs and chains and shackles and fetters of hell. Again, I admit that is some very strong language, especially to those who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. However, how in the world did these documents, did these did these creeds come about? In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I made the, the case, and I, I think I clearly made the case, that we believe in re revelation, continuing revelation, that prophets and apostles are upon this earth today. We believe um, that Joseph Smith was called to be a, a, a prophet. Um, you know, and, and Jesus Christ's life was revelatory. Everything about his life was a revelation. Um, it was it was constant revelation coming from Jesus Christ. And and yet, the minute he passed away, all of a sudden, it's supposed to have stopped? It seems to be odd to me, especially considering that it didn't immediately stop after he passed away. And that the, that the only reason that the, that the Bible was considered closed canon was because of uh, the church at the time. Some say it was Catholic Church. Some say it was the Orthodox Church. Whichever side you might be on that the church had put together the bible as a compilation and said this is this this is what we're going to believe and yet we can read through that same bible and we can read that there are books in that bible that are mentioned discussed talked about that are not in that bible so it begs to ask a lot of questions what about all these other revelations that were given uh, what about maybe other letters that paul wrote or maybe other letters that maybe the the apostles wrote before they were killed what about other Gospels? We only have four Gospels, but yet there were 12 Apostles. Maybe maybe put those two together. Put that together. Why didn't we have more uh, Gospels from other Apostles? So the point is, is that we believe in Revelation, and we don't believe in, um, in, the, in the ecumenical councils that happened uh, after, uh, after the Apostles' deaths. So it's interesting because once the apostles passed away, there was a big, <clears throat> there was a big conundrum about who is God. This is the very basic of what we believe: who is God and who is Jesus Christ and who's the Holy Ghost and how does this all fit together? Um, and so there was a lot of arguments back and forth. Uh, uh, Tertullian, Athanasius, uh, Praxius. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of them that argued over this and, and debated about this for years and years and years. I mean, centuries they debated about this. Um, Arius was also one. Uh, he was basically the antithesis to uh, the, you know, the villain according to <laughs> according to Athanasius. Uh, uh, Praxius is considered the villain according to Tertullian. Um, basically, these there were people who showed up to these uh, these councils uh, to discuss all this stuff. That you know, I mean, for instance, the Nicene Creed, the Nicene Council. Uh, they didn't. That's not where they determined the Trinity. By the way, that that was where they talked about God, the Eternal Father, and His Son Jesus Christ, and their relationship between the two. And I've made multiple videos concerning the Article of Faith Number One for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and about that relationship. So I'd highly recommend you go back and listen to the previous f three, four, five, five, the previous videos I've made on that subject. Um, but in this case. When they showed up to the Nicene Creed or the Nicene Council, they showed up and said, "Hey, well, this is what we think we should believe," and and this was their way of of trying to standardize uh, what they believed, and they did so through debate, and they did so through uh, reasoning, and they did so through logic. So I ran across this document. 
uh, it's Tertullian's treatise against Praxius. Well, Praxius was one of the early uh, Christians, as well as Tertullian was also one of the early Christians. Tertullian was the first person to ever coin the term Trinity. And he coined this term uh, well after uh, the death of the apostles. He, he, he came up with this concept on his own. Um, and this is really, this he lines out in against Praxius how he does that. Now, I don't necessarily want to go through this entire document, and I, I don't really want to... Um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I mean, I've already said some strong language, I understand that, but I don't really want to go through this to tear down the Trinity and to tear down other people's beliefs. If you really want to believe in the Trinity, I do think you should and know and understand what you, you're putting your faith in. Um, you are putting your faith in Tertullian's logic or in Tertullian's debate. Um, you are not putting your faith in any apostles, you're not putting your faith in any prophets, you are not putting your faith in any specific words of God. You're putting your faith in Tertullian. Um, and that might sound a little odd to you, but when you, when you use the, think about it when you use the, uh, when you use the scientific method, right? These are things that we can, we can see, we can hear, we can touch, we can smell, we can taste, um, and we can come up with a hypothesis and we can go through the scientific method and, and find out a conclusion based on our hypothesis and our senses that this is the conclusion and but in so doing that uh you actually put your faith in the people who invented <laughs> that that uh, scientific method you're putting your your faith in francis bacon um hey you know what faith in bacon that's that should be a shirt it should be a t-shirt anyway so <clears throat> when you're when you're saying that you believe in the trinity you're really putting your faith in tertullian and you're saying, I believe that Tertullian was the correct person on this on this matter, even though he didn't have revelation, even though he wasn't a prophet, even though he had not uh, the words of God to he had he had the the word he had the words of God to guide him, but he didn't have the words of God coming to him as revelation. So he came up with what he came up with. Um, now here's here's the issue, and here's one of the reasons I don't want to go through this whole thing one it was very difficult for me to even read through this uh the the um although i am very grateful that somebody took the time to translate this to english the translation uses different words and they actually put in in uh in one of the footnotes they put in there that they've that they're changing the word that they used like they we used you know i think they use discourse quite a bit and then finally oh, right here it goes from now Onwards, we shall translate sermo, which we have hitherto represented by discourse, by its usual English equivalent, the word. So, they basically they said, well, this is it's more understanding for us if we use the term the word instead of discourse, although they are the same. Um, I, I'm, I'm grateful that somebody translated it, but at the same time, you know, consistency goes a long way. Um, but one of the, the biggest reason that I really don't want to go through this is that Tertullian, in in so trying to build up his Trinity and the, the entire concept of Trinity, which he coined, by the way, that he tears other people down left and right. It's his, it's, 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 it's his uh, modus operandi. Let me tell you what I think and then tear everyone else down. And... <clears throat> One of the one of the examples, and this is right off the bat in the very beginning, um, he says that. Let me find it here. So I, I get it. okay. He's talking about. He's he's quoting from the scriptures. Uh, so this is footnote reference three that I'm looking at here. So he's quoting from the scriptures. Footnote reference three is John chapter eight verse forty four. Um, and he says. Uh, let Matthew and Luke to see it. I, for my part, approached God himself. I tempted the mighty hand to hand. That was the reason for my approach. That was the reason for the temptation. Otherwise, if it had not, if it had been only God's son, perhaps I should not have deemed, demeaned myself to tempt him. Nay, but he himself rather is a liar from the beginning. And so is any man whom he suborned with his own coin, like Praxius. So Tertullian begins right off the bat by saying, you know what, 
Praxius, that Satan was a liar from the beginning, and so was Praxius. So he, he starts this off with just this massive personal attack on Praxius. And he can't just state that this is why I believe this is what I believe and 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 just leave it at that and give evidence and, and reason. He has to he has to he has to tear other people down, which I which which really gives us great insight to his character, um, which, in my personal opinion, his character is weak. If he cannot if he cannot um, present the Trinity belief that he's come up with. Um, and present it in a way that says this is the way it is, and here's the scriptures that support my my arguments, um, and and here's my testimony of why I believe this is true. He doesn't do that. He's he he says here's all the scriptures, and and also Praxis is a liar, and and everyone who follows Praxis, he later calls them uh, uh, tares of Praxis. Everyone who follows Praxis is a tear. They're not wheat. They're tares of Praxis. So he, he, he just blatantly, willfully destroys anyone who doesn't follow his thinking. Um, and, and the biggest reason, and this is, uh, oh, there it is, reason. So the biggest reason why I don't really like this, I mean, why I really struggle with the Trinian, Trinitarian concept as, as given to us by Tertullian is quite simply this right here. <clears throat> so he's talking about how he came up with this, um, how he came up with this concept. And, and so therefore he's saying, Hey, look, let me read this and, and I'll, and then I'll talk about it yet. Not even then was he alone. He's talking about God was once alone for he had with him that reason, which he had in himself, his own, of course. So he's saying that in the beginning, before God made a son, before God made the heavens and the earth that he was alone and oh and but by the way he he wasn't really alone because he could reason within himself for god is rational and reason is primarily in him and thus from him are all things and that reason is his consciousness this is the greek this the greeks call logos by which expression we also designate discourse and consequently our people are deadly won't are already won't through the artlessness of the translation to say that discourse was in the beginning with god though it would be more appropriate to consider reason of older standing seeing that god is not discursive from the beginning but is rational even from before the beginning and because the discourse itself having its ground in reason shows reason to be prior as being its substance yet even so it makes no difference <laughs> and you're saying what what because i read that and i'm like what in the world did i just read what he's saying is that look man god is reasonable and god can rationalize things so i being tertullian can rationalize the trinity i being tertullian can reason up this trinity and therefore it's good because i can reason just like god can reason well that's kind of no <laughs> yes you do have reasoning yes you can reason yes you can argue and yes you can debate yes you can go through all this stuff yes you can compare scriptures and you know i find it funny speaking of comparing scriptures a side note i find it funny when when you get into an argument with somebody and they start pulling out scriptures and you're like, well, let me pull out my Bible and you can pull out your Bible and let's see which Bible is more correct. Don't waste your time. So the point is, is that the Tertullian is, is he's focused on his own reasoning. He's focused on his own, his own thought process on his own logic. And so if we put our trust in the Trinity we're putting our trust in Tertullian. You're putting your faith in Tertullian, not necessarily the Trinity. The Trinity is, what is it? It's what Tertullian says it is. It says that, that, uh, that the Father is not the Son, is not the Spirit, is not the Father, is, but the Father is God and the Son is God and the Spirit is God. Okay. <laughs> that, if that's not confusing enough, um, there's a lot of other documents that, 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 that talk about this but really what it really ultimately comes down to is revelation our understanding in the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints our understanding of the nature of god and of his son jesus christ and in the holy ghost all of that comes from revelation from god direct from god through a prophet 
just like the Bible came to us from God through prophets and apostles. This, the Trinity, did not come from God through a prophet. It came through the Word of God, which was used to conjure up or logically create the Trinity as Tertullian saw it. So the choice is yours. You can put your faith in God and revelation and in Scripture as given by God and recorded by his holy prophets, which is continuing today and is included in the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. Or you can put your faith and your trust in a man named Tertullian who lived, I don't know, 1900 years ago. It's up to you. Uh, but I can tell you now that my own reasoning, my own thought process is to go with Revelation because that's the way God has always worked. Amos 3, 7, I shall do nothing but I revealeth my secrets unto my servants, the prophets. And if we really wanted to know and understand the nature of God and the secrets of God, we're going to go through prophets and not through, uh, not through reasoning and not through ecumenical councils and not through these documents that that tear everyone else down in order to make their point. That's not how God works. It's never it's never how He's worked. He's never torn other people down in order to make His point. Yes, He's talked very very straightforward to others, but He never had to actually tear somebody down to share the gospel. He never actually had to uh, to break someone apart in order to share the commandments. He just shared the commandments. And in so doing, people were offended. So I'm sharing with you, revelation comes from God. And not from people like Tertullian. And I give you this message in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.